العمره الى العمره كفاره لما بينهما والحج المبرور ليس له جزاء الا الجنه in this hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said virtue of both had an umrah he said from one umrah to another umrah it caused expiation of the sins in between one umrah to another umrah all sins are expiated and Hajj Mabrur, its reward is except, nothing except Jannah, except Paradise. In another hadith, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Tabi'u bain al-Hajj al-Umrah, fa'inna mutaba'ata baynehuma tunfi al-dhunuba bil-maghfira kama yunfi al-kiru khubath al-hadid. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, carry on <coughs> doing Hajj al-Umrah, you know, uh, very frequently after now and then, because if you do regularly now and then Hajj and Umrah, it you know, cleans yourself from the sins and brings Allah's forgiveness like the bellow, you know, uh, that cleans the rust of the metal, gold or iron, whatever it is. When they burn it, the bellow, they pump it and they burn it cleans the old become old gold become new almost fresh so like every time you go to hajj and umrah you're coming back with clean from your sins another hadith said al ghazi fi sabilillah wal hajj wal mu'tamir wafdullah those who are in the battlefield for the sake of allah those who are doing hajj and umrah they are Allah's guests. They are Allah called them to respond. They have responded. Then when they are asking over there any kind of sanction from Allah, dua, they are making their prayer, supplication, will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He invited them to visit his house. So whatever dua they are making, Allah will answer their dua. So it is a good place to make dua for you. For your any dunya difficulty or your akhira success. This is the best place to make dua. Even tawaf itself is very rewardful. In another hadith of Ahmad, Tirmidhi and Hakim, Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man tawafa bil bayti, whoever making tawaf of this house of Allah, lam yarfa qadaman alam yada ukhra, he's not raising a feet and stepping with another feet, except illa kataballahu lahu hasana, Allah will write for him a reward, wa hutta anhu biha khatiya, and he will be removing from him a sin, wa rafa'a lahu biha daraja, and he will be um, upgrading him, you know, to another degree, uh, to his closeness. These are the virtue of the Umrah, the beautiful Ibadah, to uh, have the opportunity that our sins are forgiven, our dua are accepted. Now coming to the main actions of the Umrah, we have few farad of the Umrah. Some of the scholars said Umrah has three arkan, three fard. Some of the scholars said only two fard. And there are some wajib actions as well. About the fard, one is al ihram, entering ihram with the niyyah of ihram, is one fard, having ihram with the niyyah. Second fard, at tawaf bil bayt, to do the tawaf with the, around the house of Allah, seven times. This is two of the fard, all ulama agreed. Third fard, there is difference of opinion. That is safa, uh, sa'i bayna safa wal marwa. Okay, running between, sa'i between safa and marwa, is it fard or it is wajib? There is difference of opinion. Although the difference is not that significant. Wajib is almost fard. So the Hanafi Madhab said it is wajib, sa'i. And all other scholars said it is fard. 
What does it make any difference? There is a little bit of difference there. What is the difference? For example, if you miss Sai because something emergency happened, some accident happened, you ended up in hospital and flying back to London after Tawaf, may Allah save you, may Allah give you protection. Okay. After Tawaf and before Sai, something happened, you could not complete the Sai. He came back. Just an emergency. Then the, uh, those who said it is fard, there is nothing you can do, your ibadah is invalid totally. Okay? But Hanafi Mazhab's opinion, if you give a dam, zabah, one goat, then your wajib is, mashallah, now compensated. Khalas, your umrah is valid. Rahimallah, <laughs> Imam Abu Hanifa. All Imams as well. MashaAllah. So this is the difference only. However, as I said, importance-wise, wajib and you know, farad is almost very close, almost the same. So this is the three actions, even though you can say it is wajib, very important action, main three actions, ihram, tawaf, and sa'i. These three, of course, are the main element of the umrah. And the, then, some further wajib is there. The further wajib is al-halaq, or taqseer. To shorten your head, or trim it, or to shave it. And also, to do ihram from the miqat is wajib. Ihram is fard, but doing from miqat, it is wajib. Ah, what is the difference between these two? Ihram is fard, Doing from miqat is wajib. Do you understand any difference here? It is. For example, if you do, uh, I'll go to Makkah and buy ihram from there, I will be doing then tawaf. Your ihram is done, yes, but you miss from miqat. Or you said, I'll buy from Jeddah airport. Again, it is inside miqat. Your ihram, you're doing with the ihram, yes. But you, you didn't do it before miqat. So doing from before miqat is wajib. If you miss it, you have to pay them. So these are the farad and wajib issues. And now we are coming to the, what is the main uh, actions which will uh, break our, um, you know, Ihram is broken, or we, we, we miss something which is required to pay the dam. Uh, what is the restriction, in fact, in the Ihram time? That is important to know. We'll come back from how we start our journey, how every action we do, just in theory, what will break your Ihram rules and regulations? What you need to keep to maintain? Number one. We cannot take, shave, or cut our hair any part of the body after we started ihram. Okay? After ihram, cannot take a mustache or beard or any kind, any part of the any, any hair of the body. No, not allowed. Number two, no perfume you can use after ihram. Restricted. Number three. Okay, you are not allowed to use any kind of dress which is tailored as a dress. Not allowed. Even underwear, even hat, anything. Only two pieces of the cloth for the men. Any other kind of dress, even sock, anything is not allowed. Even if it is very cold, you're not allowed to use gloves. Okay? For men. For women, no restriction of the dress. And in the journey of ihram, when you are in ihram, you're not allowed to discuss any marriage proposal with anybody. Neither for yourself, nor for anybody else. Okay? And when you are in ihram condition, any kind of closeness 
husband wife relationship that area is also not allowed totally any kind of uh, you know activities is not allowed in olden days people are going through the you know land journey they are making hunting hunting is not allowed when you are in ihram you know olden days they used to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came from medina to makka and some of the uh, you know halal animals were there and some of the sahaba went to hunt this no you're not allowed one was not in uh, without ihram he hunted it that was allowed with ihram not allowed but nowadays nobody does this i know it's all plain journey okay in the ihram time you are not allowed to cover your head not only hat any scarf anything turban no even it is cold it cannot okay for, okay for the sisters uh, they some of the sisters of course many sisters use niqab normally in their for the part of their hijab in the ihram time they're not allowed to use the niqab because in hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la tantaqibu al-mar'a wa la taqfu al-qafazain the women will be not using niqab neither their gloves now some sisters they have been all this time using niqab now going to makkah medina they will be not using niqab ya allah too difficult for them they, they, they are doing all this outside you know whole world over there they should be more hijab now they are not doing it it's problem okay what is the solution for that and solution came in another hadith <coughs> mother aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha said in the ihram time when you are not using niqab whenever we are facing the rijal the men we one of us will be putting down their scarf from the head to down Okay that's difference between scarf and niqab what is the difference and any sisters from uh, outside you may try to see it from here this piece is called niqab in ihram time if you have to tie this niqab it's not allowed okay after before ihram you are allowed to use it mother aisha there and says we were to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when rukban the people in the riders will be crossing in front of us coming face to face we will be covering our face from top okay to uh, come down to cover our face like this okay this way so this is normal they of course women use it like this normal but when men are there they will be doing this covering their face with scarf not with the niqab so understand this two hadith give us a solution okay right and if you miss all this list we mentioned if you broke anything of this suddenly you use perfume you found one of the your mustache is a bit long now you want to take it itself is a crime you have to do fidya huh? you have to my do dam you have to have sabr now if you did you did by mistake you did not know that according to many scholar that could be forgiven but if you do knowingly then you have to pay uh, the fidya okay uh, if somebody has a need to break the ihram rule for some genuine need what is the example uh, one of the cause will be some of the people say uh, he has a problem with his urine it drops now and then it is a problem is it not a problem it is a problem it could make his ihram cloth is polluted if it falls in the floor of the masjid is another problem bigger problem it falls to his body the problem but he's not allowed to use anything which is dress now what is the solution for him 
solution is that he will be using underwear and putting tissue inside to stop the, the impurity spreading to many other places. Now, this rule is breaching the rule of ihram. That's why you know and you plan for that, you have to pay expiation of that. That is dumb. And based on a Sahabi's story, radiallahu anhu, he started a journey with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and a lot of, you know, it's called lice in his head. And when it is too hot, midday, Prophet ﷺ found his lights are coming to his face out of heat of the sun in the head. A lot of lice. Then Rasulullah ﷺ said, Ya Allah, you are suffering from the lice. Ya Rasulullah, that's the case. Then you shave your head. Because too much for him. Shave your head and you pay a dam. So the breaching to a rule of Ihram, you uh, compensate it with a dam, dabh, one goat in Mecca, that is place in Haram, you ask your hotel people, they will guide you, uh, inshallah, maybe around 400 pound, uh, sorry, dollar, uh, real, four to five hundred real probably nowadays, uh, to slaughter it and to give it to the poor people, okay? So these are the, you know, rules of keeping the Ihram rules in a regular lane and not breaching, that is an important amana. Okay? Uh, if somebody not ha have no money, then what he can uh, do? Or uh, paying the dumb, then you have to, okay, uh, he have to fast three days. Fasting could be uh, considered as a fedia is done or feeding six poor people. Okay? And for every miskin is nisfu sa'a. Uh, okay? From dates or rice or etc. But giving them is the best one, inshallah. Okay, these are the things. Now we are coming to the main uh, actions, practically, how to start our journey of Umrah. Before you start from your home to catch the flight from the airport, a few preparations you need to make for yourself. Number one, if you need to take your hair, shaving anything, your moustache, your hair, or unwanted hair, whatever, to remove this, you remove it. Make yourself as much as possible to clean. Have a nice shower, shampoo. You are ready for a big ibadah starting with. This is number one. Number two, it is always good for Umrah journey, Hajj journey, any journey you are making abroad, to pray to Raka Nafal prayer. It's very good sunnah. Okay? Then, alhamdulillah, you are leaving home. <laughs> when leaving home, there are a few actions, not only for this journey, for any journey you make. First action, you step out of your home, which feet first? Ah, people, some people say right. Because you always do right action. But going out of your home, starting with the left feet. Entering right feet. Again, leaving left feet, entering right. So your left feet to, uh, to, to go out and say Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. This beautiful dua. By the name of Allah, I relied upon Allah. There is no power, no ability except with Allah. When you say this dua, the angels around you will make dua for you. What do I offer you? They'll say, Uqita wa kufita, that you are getting protection, this dua is enough for you. Hudita, and you are guided. So you are guided, you are protected against shaitan. 
and that dua suffice you. The three dua. And then uh, when shayateen around us who want to give trouble to us, they hear dua of the angels. They say to each other, فَكَيْفَ بِكُمْ مَنْ هُدِيَ وَوُقِيَ وَكُفِيَ What will we do with the man or woman who has already guided and given protection and it is sufficing him? What you can do anything to him? They become frustrated. So would you like to frustrate shaitan or make him happy? To frustrate him. Just easier. As much as possible. Say it with his dua. Any journey you go out with this dua. So, Bismillah ta'awakaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwata, illa billah. Starting. Now go on to the vehicle, the car. Then there is a dua. To start with, what is it? Normally we say, Subhanallah, sakhra lana hadha ma kunna lahum muqranin wa inna ila rabbina la munqalibun. But this dua is in bigger form after that, you see. First start with, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Then, a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Then Subhanallah the Sakhara Lana Hada Makuna Allah Mukranin, Wa inna Ida Rabbina Ram Kalibun, Allah Maina Nas Aluka fi Safar in Ahada, Al Birra wa Takwa Omina Lama Lima Tardo, Allah Mahabin Alaina Safar and Hada what we anaboda, Allah Manta Swahib of the Safar or Khalifa to Bil Ahad, Allah Mina Udi become no Atai Safar, Waka Abatul Manta Rasu il Munkala Filmani Wal Ahal. Why do you find this dua? Hesnul Muslim, Fortress of the Muslim. Please have everyone a copy with you. All journey start with this dua. Okay? Especially which is journey means suffer. Shari, you know, definition of suffer. You must not miss this dua. Okay, so this is a beautiful dua. I start with. Then you're going to the airport. Now, why are you be using the ihram starting from? This is, of course, supposed to be from Mika. And Miqat is a border before entering the Haram. Sometimes it is only 120 kilometers, sometimes it is 300, more than 300 kilometers, which direction you are entering to. The furthest one is Medina, Dhul Khalaifa. If you're coming from Medina, you don't do it from here, nothing to do now. Just go for Medina Ibadah, finish. And then from Medina you are coming to Mecca, then you come to, after the city of Medina, after a few miles, there is a place called Dhul Hulayfiya, nowadays called Abiyar Ali. This is in, in the history, it's called, the time of the Rasulullah in his word called Hadith, in Dhul Hulayfiya. But nowadays you'll see it is called Abiyar Ali. Why Abiyar Ali? Subhanallah. I recently I discovered this, I always this question in my mind. Just a few months ago, there was information came you know, through uh, social media. A, a man in Sudan was independent Muslim ruler, a part, some part of Sudan, not whole Sudan, a region of Sudan, independent Amir. He, he found people of Medina, when they come to Dhul Hulaifa to make uh, a ihram from there, there is uh, inadequate facility of the water. So he dig some of the wells, abiyar, plural, be'er, and be'er is well, water well. So he did a couple of wells, and be'er is plural, abiyar, Ali, Ali, the man who created, who made it, is, is related with him, abiyar Ali. Nowadays, signboards say it is abiyar Ali, and in the kitab of fiqh, you'll find it's called Dhul Khulaifa, it is the same thing. So if you are coming from Medina, you go there, your bus, your car will take you there. You can have your Udu there, praying to Raqqa and make from there. However, if you don't want to go Abir Ali from hotel, you can wear the dress. Then when you are about to go to the same line of uh, the Dil Hulaifa, you can say on, in, in your uh, car, your bus, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, start the near from there. However, let us come back to our own place in London, on, from wherever we are starting our journey so now you will be going to if you go to Jeddah first if you go to Medina first it is easy as I said but if you're going to Jeddah first and from there to Mecca then you have to do your ihram before landing to Jeddah so generally people 
do it before Miqat, uh, before landing Jeddah 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, they would announce, the, the, the people of you know, aircraft, they would make announcement, we are very soon landing to Jeddah, those who are going to perform Hajar Umrah, you may get ready to do your niya of ihram. After a few minutes, they make another announcement, we are going to cross it now. So without further delay, you do your niya of ihram. How you do niya of ihram? Allahumma labbayka umratan. Allahumma labbayka umratan. Allah, I am intending to perform Umrah. If you can say Arabic best, is it better? If you cannot say in Arabic, say in English. Allahumma labbayka umratan. Allah, I intend to perform Umrah. Okay? And then immediately say, Talbiyah. Labbayka Allahumma labbayk, labbayka la sharika ka labbayk, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. Minimum once. But it is whole journey, if frequently saying is very good adhkar, one of the best dhikr of this time is Talbiyah. Because it is Tawheed of Allah, pure Tawheed coming to, to the, uh, in the, in the concept of Talbiyah. Uh, and then, uh, you, you, you go with this, uh, you know, uh, near from there, you are now in a state of Ihram. All restriction is applicable to you. Now, why are you changing the cloth? It is, some people, if you go to Saudi Airlines, they have uh, some kind of cabin in the airplane itself. You may change the, the men. Of course, women doesn't need to change anything. Uh, but it's too, too much for... If, uh, many people are going, this small cabin will not uh, have enough space for everyone. Then it is good recommendation to pray something. If you are in Heathrow Airport, there is a prayer space. Over there, it could be one of the Salah times, for example. Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, anything. Or without no Salah, you go there, you may change there with ihram and take out all other stuff, this is one option. Okay? And some other people, they do even within airplane, they can manage it, those who are expert. But it is good if you are not that trained enough, you do the change over there, and you think, I'm worried now, it is very cold weather. One sheet of simple dress will be uh, not enough. So that is a solution to that. <coughs> okay? I'm coming now to show you how to wear the ihram, okay? Now, practically, we'll demonstrate this to you, inshallah. So the men will be using one sheet like that. One is bottom, one is up side, okay? This is the bottom piece. So like this. Okay, mashallah. Perfect. So this one, if you're worried about subhanAllah, it should be tied with something. Okay, that is a solution as well. These kind of belts, purpose is that you will have carrying your mobile phone, carrying your passport, some money as well probably. So for this, there is justification, there are pockets. Okay, for the purpose of the, all, all this stuff to keep, so you're allowed to use this. Okay? MashaAllah, you tie the belt, okay? This is one option, one kind of belt. This is another belt. Belt has sewing and other things, that is no problem at all. This is like a bag type, it's still considerable. Okay? So this is issue of, uh, you know, bottom one to how to control this. Okay? Top one, you know, so India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, many of them use the chadar, you know, the, in the winter time, mashallah, they are used to this. Okay, this way. All the time covering the both of the shoulders. Never open the, any shoulder now. Uh, you know, before you start uh, tawaf, there is sometimes right one will be uh, needed to open, but all, apart from that time, always both shoulders should be covered, this is sunnah. But many people will 
uh, always covering one side and uncovering another side. This is the habit of many people. Okay? That's not right. That's against the law. Okay. Right. Uh, these two pieces, in Heathrow Airport, you can use these two pieces. You are, if you're worried, you want to use some kind of double pieces that is also allowed to protect, have the protection. This is one thing. Other thing is, you're not allowed to use, of course, these two pieces only. No jacket, no overcoat, no jumper, no cardigan. So it is cold. What do you do? So there is a solution to that. You may put on your back your jacket, but don't wear it properly. For example, can I use this? If you want to use this, it's very cold when it's sitting in the airplane or somewhere without wearing properly, like this. Look at me. As if I, I'm, I hanged it there, not wear it with my two of the hands in the sleeves. So this, this is considerable, just to get some kind of protection from the cold. This is allowed, or blanket in the airplane, you can use it, or any kind of special sheet you have in the coach where it is also maybe cold, you can use it. But don't wear it properly. That is the only restriction. Right? Zakalakaram. So this is about the ihram um, dress. And ihram is not only wearing the dress, ihram is from there. You all maintain all this restriction which a little while ago I mentioned, okay? That is altogether ihram. And some people only think wearing this piece is, 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 piece is, is ihram. Just so from, if you start from Heathrow wearing this, you didn't enter to the ihram, no. Entering ihram from miqat. When you say, Allah uh, umratan, then you say, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik. Then your ihram is started. From miqat, from miqat. Okay? Right. Alhamdulillah. Then, we're coming to the very operational bit again. So you are ready from home, gone to, alhamdulillah, uh, to airplane, to aircraft, and you start a journey. And miqat came, you did your niya. He landed to Jeddah now, uh, then alhamdulillah, always up and down, descending uh, and ascending time, increase your talbiya. Uh, the, the whole journey until he reached to uh, Mecca, this talbiya is the biggest and most important adhkar, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much. Now, you are going to arrive to Mecca. Of course, you'll be going to the hotel first, leaving your bag and baggage. If you are too tired, you need to have a little rest, eating something, making udu, that's fine. So if you are not too tired, then it's better that you do your umrah, perform your umrah as soon as possible. However, some people could become, you know, their health is weak, they are maybe ill, they could not sleep, whole night was in journey. So if too tired, then you want to take sleep, rest, that is allowed. It is allowed if you are too tired. Allah you call the fellow nafsan illa usah. Okay? For example, in the sometime in the summer, hot summer, when if you arrive 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, too hot. You cannot see it's too much. I cannot do. Then you can have a sleep of a couple of hours. Then in the afternoon, uh, you may, after asr, you may do. So it is allowed. But if without any kind of valid reason, it is of course recommended to do the perform the umrah as soon as possible. Okay, once you enter to the Masjid of, uh, you know, Baitullah, you're entering now. Normally, as you enter to any Masjid, which fit first? Right one. What do I to say? Uh, normally, Allah Ma'at Ta'ala Abu Rahmati was the full one. Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu wa rasulillah, Allah Ma'at Ta'ala Abu Rahmati. But there is longer one as well, if you can see, you'll find it in Hassan Muslim. Okay, that's very good to say that. Once you gone to masjid, now what you do? You go to every other masjid, you pray two rakat, tahiyat al-masjid. But here, if 
Umrah is due, Tawaf is due, that is wajib, at Fard. That is Fard. So you have to do the Fard first. Start your Tawaf. This is your Tahiyyah, Tahiyyat al Masjid. But if there is a Fard prayer due upon you, then Fard prayer should be given priority. That either Jama'ah is going to take place within five minutes, Azan has taken place, then Khalas, you pray Fard first. Or Jama'ah is done. You arrive there, you know, your fard time is due, then you pray your fard quickly, and then go for tawaf, starting your eh, fard tawaf now. Now, which corner we start with? There's four corners of the house of Allah. It is a cube size. This, is, this one is called, from my side, right side, it's called Hajar Aswad, the black stone corner. And if you are coming in hotel from this side, you are entering from this gate, that gate, that gate, you don't start your tawaf. You may start the journey, the wave of the people enter from that direction, join them, but your tawaf is not started yet. yet. Carry on with them, carry on with them, carry on, carry on, carry on. Until you come here at this corner, your tawaf is started. Before you start your tawaf, men, you do now ittiba. Hmm. What ittiba is? That your the top one supposed to be covering both of the shoulders. Now before you start men, the first tawaf you do uncover your right shoulder. Okay? You are ready now for tawaf. Okay. And of course uh, those who are sister for them, this sunnah is not applicable. Okay. Now you are just corner of the uh, black stone corner. Now it's starting. With, you raise your hand. Allahu Akbar. Okay. By takbir, you start. And ishara. Allahu Akbar. And start. You don't need to kiss your hand after takbir. Just Allahu Akbar and start. And there is a dua. Some of the Salafi Salihin recommended is good. Allahumma imanan bika wa tasdiqan bi kitabika wa wafa'an bi ahdika wa tiba'an li sunnati nabiyika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you can say that, it's fine. If you cannot say that, it's not that important. Uh, and then you start with some beautiful adhkar and dua. What is most important dhikr in our life? La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamdi yuhya yameed wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, allahu akbar, allahu akbar, allahu akbar, allahu akbar, allahu akbar, It started with all these adhkar and dua from Quran and Sunnah. Whatever you memorize, finish all those. And then you say your own language. What you need of dunya, need of akhirah, say all this. Men, first three ashwat, three circles, they have another sunnah. It's called ramal. This Ramal one, that means it is slightly running. But there is no space to run. So what do you do? You act as if you are running. Even your sister, your wife, your mother, your daughter are with you. You cannot, you know, run. They cannot run. Even though there is a space. So you will be acting like if you are running. Like this, okay? okay. Same walking speed. But this is just an act of sunnah. If you can do it, it's very good. If you could not do it, you miss it, alhamdulillah, your umrah is still valid. So, and you say the dua, it is three round only. This ramal, three round only. And ittiba, opening right shoulder, all seven rounds. And some people do other way, they forget, they become confused. Which one is seven, which one is three? It's always people come in confusion. So, opening the shoulder, is all seven rounds. And Ramal, bit of running, is only fast three rounds. Okay, okay. Now you start coming from, if you consider Blackstone Corner is the first one, then second one, third one, uh, second one, third one, fourth one is called Arrokun al Yamani. Fourth one is called Arrokun al Yamani, Yamani Corner. Yamani is that direction. So, there is Iraqi corner, there is Shami corner, 
the Yamani corner, black stool corner. Okay, this way. So the third one is called uh, Arroku Yaman. It is also Sunnah. Rasulullah, if he had chance, he'll be touching just this Rokuri corner, Yamani corner, touching. But nowadays, Allah, this is too crowded, overcrowded as well. I do not recommend people to go normally for that. Okay? If you find very uh, accidentally little number of people, you may try. With all this big crowd, don't try that. Now, many people will be touching black stone, kissing it. It, for the kiss, kissing the black stone corner is the biggest struggle nowadays, almost a fight. Without fight, pushing someone, you cannot do this. And not even, you know, light pushing, you have to do heavy pushing. <laughs> so, it is mustahab to kiss. But it is sinful to push a Muslim if he's hurt by your push. I, you can see many people, even sisters, women, women are, you know, pushing each other. This is not right. For the sister at all, please avoid it. For the men as well, we have given up. All of us are not going to near up. They know, unfortunately, without any discrimination, most of the people do their duhal. Most of the ignorant people will be more pushing for that place. This is the reality. Knowledgeable people will never go. Because this is causing problem, pushing somebody, and some people spend so much time, you go there with push, and they push, push you back, you make another push, you push you back. SubhanAllah, unnecessarily becoming tired. So do the simple tawaf, it's better. Between Rukun Yamani, Rukun third corner, to the uh, black stone corner, this area, Rasulullah used to say the dua more, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa qina adhaab naar. MashaAllah, everybody memorized that, it's good. Uh, as much as possible, re uh, you can repeat it. But it's not that only this one, if, if this journey taking 15 minutes time, you can say many other dua as well, and now and then this one. So it's not that only this one you say uh, in this area, other dua's you can repeat here as well. So this is the time, this most important ibad of tawaf, uh, of umrah is this, this tawaf. Focus. Dua, why you are there, and look at that Kaaba sometime to appreciate Allah's favor upon you, that you, He has given you tawfiq to come to visit this house. While many people in this world, they wish to go to visit, but in their lifetime never happen. When I remember my mother, rahimahullah, wanted so much to visit, I was a student there, miskin, could not take her. <laughs> She was hoping and wishing to, to make it, but he, she could not. May Allah bless and Jannat al -Firdaus. So we are very fortunate. At doing even many times. So thank Allah for that. And so, say Allah, you, since you brought me Allah, you give me the best benefit you can give to people. You make the most of the, you know, reward you will be giving to the people. Okay? In your own language. And then you finish your tawaf seven times, then you go to have covering yourself, the right shoulder was open, now you cover it. And praying two raka, salah, sunnah. It is best recommended in front of Maqam Ibrahim, from back to corner to the next corner, this area is called Maqamu Ibrahim. If nowadays, holiday time, Ramadan, Hajj time, is fully packed, hardly you'll get any space in Maqam Ibrahim. And praying there, it could uh, cause obstacle to the many people who are doing tawaf. Then in the very back area, if you get anything, chance, fine. If not, to go to any area of the masjid. Just pray to Raka Salah. Covering your shoulder back, praying to Raka Salah, First uh, uh, raka after Fatiha, قُلْ يَا يُحَ الْكَافِرُونَ And second raka, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد After Fatiha. And make dua over there. It is a place of dua where dua could be inshallah accepted. After dua, then you drink zamzam. This is also sunnah. Rasulullah used to drink zamzam. And he used to take a little bit of water in his hand to rub his, you know, uh, head and shoulder, a little bit of upper part of the body he did. 
If you want to do, that's fine as well. So drink after drinking Zamzam, you head to the Sa'i, starting from Safa. Okay? When you come to the Safa, uh, then uh, you come, uh, if there is some of the old and old books say it is Sunnah, after Turaka prayer, go back to give a kiss to the black stone and then go to the Safa. Don't do this nowadays too much. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was easy, but nowadays ulama never recommend that. Going back again, all people are coming from Tawaf, we go from there to have this obstacle for them, it's too much. So you go straight away to the Safa, and once you reach there, a little high, a mountain is no more there. It was Safa mountain and Marwa mountain. Now they have almo almost, you know, taken down all these mountains, highness came down, little bit height is there, try to reach little bit of height, and then once you reach there, you say, inna safa wal marwata, you say, audhu billahi min shaitan rajim first, inna safa wal marwata min sha'ayri Allah, fa man hajj al bayta wa itamara fala junaha alahi an yattawafa bihima, wa man tatawwa khayra fa inna allaha, Shakirun Alim. If you can memorize this ayah from now on, it will be very good. If you don't memorize, you may read from the book. And you must have one good book to carry with you as guide of Hajj and Umrah. And the uh, best one is, uh, I recommend, uh, Sheikh bin Baz's book. Also, one book is here in our in modern days written. I forgot the title of the book. It is there. If you go to outside in the foyer, in front of the institution, our book shelves, there is a book in English, this is also authentic. So if you can find that ayah over there to memorize, in the Safa al Marwa Tamisha Ayrilla, Faman Hadal Baita Vitamara Fala Junaha Lehi at Tawafa Bihima. Okay? And then before you start your journey of Sa'i, Sa'i meaning running, you'll be not running all the way, just going this journey is called itself Sa'i. So before you start Sa'i, or while starting Sa'i, you say, La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulk lahu al-hamd yuhyi yamitahu ala kulli shay'in qadir La ilaha illallah wahdah anzaza wa'dah wa nasara 'abdah wa 'azza jundah wa hazam al-ahzab wahdah La ilaha illallah wa la na'budu illa iyyah mukhlisin lahu ad-din wa law karih al-kafirun Start the journey and saying this dua start Now you can continue with many other dua which you did in tawaf area in matawaf while doing tawaf Repeat all this here, from Quran and Sunnah, any general dua for yourself, your family, your parents, uh, your children, uh, for uh, goodness of this Ummah, uh, for anything, for dunya, akhirah, and good, good causes, you make dua uh, after uh, Quran, Hadith, your own language, and inshallah, carry on. And then, after going one third or one fourth of the journey to Marwa, il fees a first kind of green light is coming. When green light comes, from there you start a bit running. Although again, same thing, there's no enough space to run physically, but you try as if you're running, your family with you, they don't need to run, women are not allowed to run. So they are with you, they are normally walking, you are like, you know, close the steps as if you are running. To the next green light, between two green light, this is running. And you know the history of that. Hajar, uh, radiallahu anha, looking for water to, uh, for Ismail. She climbed the sofa and looking for anywhere water sign. And she couldn't find, she should be going to the next mountain, Marwa. When she came down, this was low land. She will not see her child. That's why she was running here. And going up, again Marwa should be looking at the child, oh, it is, he is safe. She did how many, how, many, how many times running? Seven times. We do imitate that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liked her work. Sacrificed so much. He made it a part of right of Hajj and Umrah, subhanAllah. You can imagine what is her status with Allah. Because Allah, as Prophet Ibrahim left her alone with her child, 
without anybody giving them protection. And he went back to Philistine. And she said, are you angry upon us? We did something wrong to you? You're punishing us? Or it is command of Allah that you are following that command? And she knows prophets don't, don't, don't do anything except with that command of Allah. He said, Allah, command of Allah. She said, isn't la yudayun Allah? If it is the case he commanded, we have confidence in Allah, he will not make us, we are lost. This lady, subhanAllah, is remembered in our Hajj and Umrah. Allah made it the rights of Hajj. Not to remember him, ha, it is Ibadah of Allah, it is Manasik. But it is history. I always say, when you go for Hajj and Umrah, Allah he always read Sirah. History, Islamic history. How this house, his house was built. What is the story of Safa and Marwa? What is the story of Zamzam? What is the sacrifice of our mother, Hajar alayhi salatu wasalam? That's very important. Remember Rasulullah was you know, around this area. He was doing tawaf around the house. You are doing the same area tawaf as he did. Maybe sometime you step, you step on his step. Subhanallah. So that feeling, emotion is very important. Okay? Right. So you go to after two, two green lights, then normally walking, going to the marwa. When you go to the Marwa, again face the Qibla, make small dua. In the beginning of the Safa, when you say in the Safa al-Marat al-Sha'arillah, you say that, make small dua facing Qibla, and then this, uh, you know, La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah Hadaw la sharika Allah, all this dua. In Marwa, same thing. Facing Qibla, a little bit, raising your hand, La ilaha illallah Hadaw la sharika Allah, this dua again, and some other duas. And Adhkar, Dua and Adhkar, Dua and Adhkar, whatever you know, Alhamdulillah, carry on. While coming back to Marwa, again between the two green signals, green lights, try to run. So coming to Safa back, how many round done? Two. Don't consider from Safa to Marwa coming back to Safa is one, no, it is two. Some people do 14. They consider coming from Safa to Marwa, coming back to Safa is one. They did this mistake. I know some miskin did. In the Hajj time, he said, Ah, I did 14 times then. <laughs> Even seven times is enough. It takes sometimes an hour and a half. If you do 14 times, it's almost three hours. This is the punishment of those people who don't learn properly. <laughs> you see? Alhamdulillah. You are learning. Hopefully, you'll be not doing this blunder. Okay, right. This way, once you come, uh, finish, you know, the seventh one is finished by uh, with, with uh, Marwa. Seven times finishes with Marwa. After you finish, then your main Umrah activity is done. To come out of Ihram, there is one wajib whiting that is to cut your hair. Don't uh, do anything before cutting the hair. First you cut your hair, then you change your Ihram cloth. Don't change Ihram cloth before cutting the hair. Now, hair cutting is two type. One is shaving the hair. Other one is you trim or you shorten your hair. Both are allowed. But shaving is multiplied three times more reward. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made dua for those who shave. Allahumma qfir lil muhalliqeen. Allah make, forgive those who did, you know, shave the head, head Allah forgive them. The Sahaba said, Wal muqassirini Rasulullah, those who did qasr, trim, he didn't say anything. Then second time, Allahumma qfir lil muhalliqeen. Allah forgive those who shave the head. Wal muqassirini Rasulullah, what about here Rasulullah, those who did trim? He didn't say anything. Third time, Allahumma qfir lil muhalliqeen. Allah forgive them, those who shave the head. وَلِلْمُقَصِّرِينَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ What about those who dreamed? Then he said, وَلِلْمُقَصِّرِينَ So after three times he said, once for those who just cut the hair, shorten it, and they don't shave. That's why it's more rewardful. 
Okay, inshallah. Uh, for both places, Ta'af and say sisters never try to run. You'll see the subhanallah, some men are running, women are running as well. Again, without learning properly, they go for Hajj and Umrah, they do mistake after mistake. Right? Now, sisters, there are some issues coming to that. If sisters are ihram time, they are in their menstruation period. They need to do same thing as ghusl, as cleaning themselves, having shower, and using the pads, and normally ready for ihram. With talbiya, with the niya, all this do, do, will be doing what men does. Of course they'll be not praying, they'll be not studying tawaf, not doing their umrah until they are purified, finish their period, and they do shower, and they will be going for tawaf. So this is a, a um, restriction for them. A tawaf is not allowed, like salah is not allowed, without a puri you know, purification time. So sisters need to wait. Now you can say, subhanallah, uh, we are supposed to go to Mecca for six days, Ten day, four days in Medina. Within six days, she didn't come to have, you know, purification. She will stay with this situation. You may go take her to Medina and see after two days of Medina, she got purification. And then a clever idea will be, you catch a train, which is very fast, or take a taxi and bring her to Mecca back for one day, coming, doing tawaf and sa'i, same day going back to Medina to stay in that hotel. If it is last day only or final day before the journey, then you make plan that you're coming to do the Umrah and coming to Jeddah airport. That is planned this way. Okay. Now, if she's are going to Medina fast, and Makkah coming later. And there's no way she'll be getting purification. She will be losing the chance of Umrah. Here, Allah's Qadr, it is not in her faith. So she will be, or those who are not sure what will happen to her, they will make a short conditional near. Conditional near, ishtirat. In the Ihram time, we'll say, Labbaik Allahumma bil Umrah. Okay, they'll say, Labbaik Allahumma Umratan, and they say, Faida habasani habasan, fa mahalli haythu habastani. If you cannot forget, uh, you cannot say in, in Arabic, say in English, oh Allah, any restriction comes, any barrier comes, that we, I cannot perform the Umrah, I'll be coming out of Ihram there. It is called conditional niya. It is called conditional niya. So this way, the sister will be coming back without Umrah. However, she can spend time in the Sahan of Haram, in the fire of Haram, not entering the Masjid al-Haram, neither going to the Tawaf area. Safa Marwa is not Tawaf area. She's allowed to go sit down there and pray. And many sisters, you'll see of that situation, they sit down somewhere in the fire, in fire you know, a group of sisters, they are not praying. She can join them in their club. Okay. And it's not only for chit chat over there. She will be doing ibadah. What ibadah? Dua. Dua to Allah. And not to feel sadness. Not to feel, I am so, I did, I am so misfortune person. Allah did given me never mercy. This time I'm facing this. No, this is not allowed. This is not Allah, it is not your fault. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giver of the system to our sisters, it, He will not consider that you uh, get less than other people. We, this is your ibadah, instead of tawaf and salah, you cry to Allah, make dua to Allah, tasbihat, morning dhikr, evening dhikr, take dua photos of the Muslim dua book, repeat these duas, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kudunna dhala min say it in own language, all this time you spend there. This is your ibadah sister. You don't know, maybe your dua is more accepted than their umrah. Their tawaf and sa'i. 
So don't feel sad. Don't blame Allah. Don't blame yourself. Okay? So Alhamdulillah. Allah, what he decided for me, his decree is the best one. I have no complaint, Allah. If you, you do have any complaint, if Allah give you Jannah. Do you have any complaint? If you could not pray there, but Allah is giving you better. So sister, feel that kind of goodness. So it is always cyst for sisters and other brothers who are very ill, they are, you know, not sure how their health will be. Though for those people, it is recommended, they will say in the haram time, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik umratan, at that time, if Allah, any situation come, that I'm unable to perform the umrah, I will come out of haram, then it is a good way out for them. They don't need to pay any fidya. But if somebody did not make this conditional niya, and he or she found later on unable to perform umrah, then they cannot come without, with a haram. They cannot take it out. For taking it out, there is the expiation. They have to give a dam. Slaughtering a goat to make sure uh, that the kafara is done. Then they can wear their normal dress and they can come home. Okay, this is something important for, uh, to note for the sister's situation and any brother who feel that he is... Uh, in a risk of missing it. About the qasr, uh, I mean, uh, cutting the hair, as I said, two options. Whenever you go to after Sa'i, you go to your hotel room, you'll find around any hotel, if you ask people, every corner there is saloon, hair cutting facility available. In everywhere. Don't worry for that. Some people always come to the tower, uh, you know, building or this... Uh, clock tower, there are a couple of them, but in our, wherever your hotel will find, there is saloon. It's available. For the sisters, they don't need to go to the saloon, of course, so that their mahram will cut their hair after he is done himself, then he'll be doing with the scissor, uh, one unmula, what do we call it? One, one call it one, what is this ear called in the finger? Huh? Inch. 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 Ah, inch is something else. Less, less than an inch, a little bit, okay? After this size. Finger tips. Ah, fem okay, this is the one. Finger tip. Up to here. So from back of the hair, just taking the scissor and you can do this way. That's done. After that, all restriction is gone. You're free of all restriction. How will be spending your time now after Umrah is done? In past time, in olden days, people will be doing it frequently Nafal Tawaf, Nafal Tawaf, Nafal Tawaf. But unfortunately, because of overcrowding situation, and now it's very difficult to allow you to do Tawaf. They are not, authority, authority is not allowing it. So you do pray Salah, you know, Nafal Salawat, you know, there is restricted time, apart from the restricted time and makru time, you can pray whatever nafal prayer you want to pray. You can do morning azkar, evening azkar inside the haram. You can do Quran khatam or Makkah, Medina. Can I do one khatam? It's a good idea as well. If you couldn't finish even you tried your, you know, most time to read over there, that's good as well. And making dua is a big, one of the biggest ibadah. Looking at haram and Appreciating Allah's ni'mah, crying out, tears coming out of, of, of the gratefulness to Allah, it's also ibadah. So, these are the important things, utilize your time. Do you have a social media? Are you on social media? This fitna is a big fitna. Uh, how, how I'm doing tawaf? Yes, I am now doing tawaf now. I'm near Hajar Aswad now. Yeah, mashallah, this is the people do. Auzu billah, don't do this. This is showing off, this riya. You, you know, before going Umrah, I'm going to Umrah, can you make dua for me? He sent the whole world through social media. These are not good idea at all. Not for Ibadah, we don't publicize it. Okay? And don't engage your time with social media too much. Over there, every moment is important. Focus in Ibadah, focus in Ibadah. Dua is the, you know, it's the far. Many sins we have committed, we need to cry to Allah. So that is the environment we need to be. Okay, inshallah. Right, so finish Makkah one, 
and then once you go to Medina, Medina Ibadah is very simple. First, you enter the you know uh, Masjid al Nawawi, same dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahu Akbar. Rahmatak. Audhu billahi al-Azim. If you say full one, Audhu billahi al-Azim. Wa ajhil kareem. Sultan al-Qadim. Shaitan al-Rajim. Bismillah. Allah ma sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa Muhammad. Allahu Akbar. Tahli Abu Aba. Rahmatak. Then, if there is no fard salah, you must do tahiyat al-Masjid. Two rakah minimum. And you do further further rakat more nawafil is good because every rakat will be multiplied to how many times? One thousand times. So if you're praying two rakat, as if you are praying two thousand rakat. So see, mashallah, utilize the time. Reciting Quran, altar, dua, istighfar, and another ibadah over there to give salat and salam to Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You go out of the masjid from Babu Salam, queue happening to see, to visit the grave of Rasulullah, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, while it will take time, it may be uh, half an hour it could take you to go to the rich to there, over 15 minutes or maybe 45 minutes, Allah knows. <coughs> while you're going there, you say more and more salat and salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Carry on and dua and, and salat and salam, dua and salat and salam, carry on, carry on, carry on, until you reach to the masjid of Rasulullah, uh, the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? Uh, when you come to the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, there is three windows you see. First window, it is exactly grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Of course, you'll be not given so much time to stand there. So you come and say, As-salatu, as-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. As-salatu, as-salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah. As-salatu, as-salamu alayka ya, ya Habib Allah. Ashadu annaka balakta risala wa addayt al-amana wa nasata al-umma wa jahata fila haqqa jihadi. Uh, any dua, uh, any, any kind of uh, salat and salam, you know, you say that. And find it in Hassan al-Muslim, for the Muslim, what kind of tahiyya salam you make. And then, next one window is Abu Bakr anhu. Next window is Umar anhu. They are buried there. So, over there, what do you say? You can say, As-salatu, as-salamu as, 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 ya khalifata rasulillah, ya waziray rasulillah, ya khalifatay rasulillah. You can say that. But if not, normally, qabr ziyara dua. As-salamu alaykum diyara qawmi mu'mineen. And to Lana Salafu Nahnu Vikum Lahipun, Nasalulana, Inshallah, Nasalulana Lakun Afia. So, this kind of dua is enough, and there is no enough time. People are in queue, uh, and then uh, you come out of the masjid, and you think, SubhanAllah, I'm not satisfied. It's, it was a very short visit. I wanted to spend more time. Now you go inside the masjid again, and you start now make longer dua to Raka again. Oh Allah, grant me. Shafa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the day of judgment. His intercession Allah grant for me. You don't ask Rasulullah sallallahu please intercede me. No. Because he has no authority. Authority belongs to Allah. It is in Surah in Ayat al-Kursi. Man dhalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idni. Who is there to intercede to him except after his permission. Allah permit for myself to Rasulullah to do intercession for me. Uh, I cry to Allah, being the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Time have the commitment of following his sunnah. If you're not keeping beard, make dua. Rasulullah sallallahu said, keep beard, ya Rasulullah. Ya Allah, I want to keep beard. Give me tawfiq. Okay? So this way, any sunnah you miss, you try to say, oh, I want to practice this sunnah. Alhamdulillah. So that is done. And then there is a specific place in Masjid al Nawawi between his uh, grave to his old member, Baina Baiti or Mimbari Rawdatum min Riyad al Jannah. He said, between my uh, house, which is Aisha Radilana's room, to my member, it is a place, it is a garden of the gardens of the Jannah. So that means there is some additional status of this place. 
which is marked already. Praying to Raka there is good if you get chance. But I'm worried to get their chance you need to stand maybe half an hour to one hour. <laughs> but nowadays it you may book in advance fine. But once you book it do to Raka come out of that because other people are waiting. Many people what they do, they stay there for hours and hours because they are in Jannah, they don't want to come out. <laughs> While other people are, you know, waiting for a long time. So you are very selfish. This way it will be not very appreciated by Allah. Pray to Raka and come out. This is one of the special places in the Masjid Nawawi. If not whole Masjid Nawawi, alhamdulillah, is the status of Masjid Nawawi. Is that enough, inshallah? Uh, after profiting Masjid, what is there any Sunnah Ziyara in Medina? Yes. One of the Sunnah Ziyara is to go to the visit Masjid Quba. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is to go Saturday, especially Saturday morning, uh, after making Udu at his home, he'll be coming to perform uh, two raka in Masjid Quba every Saturday. But if you go Sunday or Friday, no problem. If you, time is different, no problem. Okay, uh, and he said, uh, praying two raka in Masjid Quba is equivalent to performing one Umrah. Praying two raka in Masjid Quba is equal to performing Umrah. Thawab wise, mashallah. Okay, uh, so. You can, you can pray two rakah, you can pray four rakah, you can pray more. If your two reporter allows you to stay more, that's fine. Okay. And uh, now, some of the people, two reporter will say, 40 prayers at the prophetic masjid. There's a hadith. The person who offers 40 prayers consecutively in my mosque without missing a prayer in between will secure immunity from the fire and hell and will be saved from torments and also from hypocrisy. This is a hadith, but hadith is daif, is weak. Therefore, if you can stay 40, there is no restriction. But if it needed to compromise your days of Makkah, that is totally stupidity. Because Makkah is more rewardful than Medina. So if you are whole together, it's 10, 12 days, then most more time should be in Makkah, at least 50-50. If is in Medina is more than Makkah, then it is a big loss. Okay. Uh, then, oh, once you visit the Rawda of Rasulullah sallallahu his grave, uh, there is goodness there because he said, whoever visiting me physically giving salam to my grave, Allah gives my ruh back, I answer his salam. So that you feel, mashallah, that you are giving salam to him, he's receiving it. But once you say salat and salam from here, it reaches through angel to him. Anytime we say salat and salam to him, it reaches there by angels. That are appointed angels, they take our salam to Medina. But once you go to the grave, his salam straight away received by him. And he answers back. You may answer, you may ask a question. Thousands of people also giving salam, how he is able to answer all of them? Look, this is another world. The system of this dunya world doesn't work there. In the grave world, in the hereafter, everything is totally different system. Our system in the dunya is limited. I can talk to only one person. I cannot talk hundred people together. Everybody asking me and answering them. Not possible in this world. But that is another world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given this special status to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in his grave. Okay. Now, how many times we will be visiting the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Normally, salafi salihin for this short visit, they'll be visiting once only. Not every day visiting. If you are staying months, maybe, you know, after now and then, that's fine. But for short journey, you do every day one visit of his grave. This is not the spirit. Because he said, لا تجعلوا بيوتكم قبورا ولا تجعلوا قبر عيدا وصلوا عليا فإن صلاتكم طولوني حيث كنتم Don't make your house or grave. That means you pray some sunnah and nafal in your house. 
and don't make my grave is a is a grave of is a place of visit and celebration. Don't make it this way. You send salat and salam wherever you are, it will reach me. And very frequently, every day visiting is not liked by our great predecessors. There is a hadith who is uh, Hassan ibn Ali. Hassan ibn Hassan ibn Ali. You know Hassan was a grandchild of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He has a name, his child, son, his name is also Hassan. He has another a son, his name is Ali. So Ali is main Ali's grand grandchildren, child. He narrated, he said, and Rajulan ila qabri Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A man came to visit the grave of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam too much. Now and then every time he comes, too much frequent visit. <coughs> then he said to him, Ya Hada, listen to man. In Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kala, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tattakhidu qabr Eid. Don't make my qabr is a place of okay, Eid, celebration, frequent visiting. No. Wasallu alayya haythu ma kuntum, fa'inna salatakum tabliguni. Send your salat and salam wherever you are, it will reach to me. Fama anta wa radun bil Andalusi minhu illa sawa. Look, you and a man in Andalusia is saying, Send Salat and Salam to him. He don't need to come every day to visit his grave. Okay? So in this small trip, short trip, once is enough. Maximum we do two. More than that, probably not. Spending all this time rather to other ibadah in the masjid an Nawawi. Okay? Uh, if I miss anything, Allah alam, you may raise me uh, through questions, inshallah. Yeah? Okay, sorry. Uh, you know, in Medina, few spots of visit, Sunnah. Once we say, uh, after Masjid Nawi and Rawda, I mean Riyadh al-Jannah and grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then I, we say Masjid Quba, but Jannah al-Baqi, it's not Jannah al-Baqi true. It is Baqi only. Uh, you know, it is not called Jannah al-Baqi. The Baqi graveyard where many of the Sahaba, are buried many family members of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ummahatul Mu'minin, his wives, his uh, grandchildren, Sahaba, Tabi'un, Imam Malik, great scholars. The visiting this Baqi is very good practice. And Sunnah, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, used to frequently visit the grave for men only. Women no. Unfortunately, many women goes because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "La'an Allahu zairat al kubur." Allah cards those women who go to visit the grave. So, burying the people, cover ziyara, all for the men. Women will be doing dua for home, from home. So, your two time will be allocated after Fajr. That is, they open the gate, and also after Asr, they open the gate. You can go inside and make dua. If it is closed, you can make dua from outside as well. Normal cover ziyara. We said, Assalamu alaikum dara qawm mu'minin. Antum lana salifun, nahnu wikum lahikun, insha'Allah. Nasallallahu lana wa lakum al-afiyah. And then any other dua, you know, for the mayyitin, Allah, wa al-hayyina, mayyitin, ashayitin, ghaibin, all this, you can say, insha'Allah. So this is another ziyara, which is al-baqi. There's another ziyara you may make, that is shuhada uhud. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go sometime, not very frequently. So you are allowed to visit also Shuhada Uhud, including Hamza radiallahu anhu. These are the Sunnah ziyara, you can say. And people go to the battlefield of uh, Khandaq, Ahzab, there's nothing left there. If you are very uh, historic inter interest, then you may go. It is not any virtuous ziyara. Masjid Qibla Tain, again, it is not any Sunnah ziyara. No, nothing special about this. Uh, but if you are Interests have the interest of Sira and history. For that, you want to see, that's fine. Okay. Apart from that, don't go there for additional virtue of praying there. Praying there in that mosque and any other mosque is same. Only prophetic mosque and Kuba mosque is special. Okay. We always look what Hadith says. We follow that. Inshallah. Uh, alhamdulillah. Hopefully, we cover this. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Okay. That's all. A question came, inshallah, and if you have any question, I'll be answering a few questions, inshallah. Uh, 
question is, uh, I am going for 12 days to Mecca. After um, completing my Umrah, we will go to Taif. And we want to make, uh, can I uh, make another uh, Niyah of Umrah from Taif? Okay. <laughs> well, if you go outside Umrah for any reason, and you are coming back to Mecca, then it is good to do Niyah of another Umrah. But if I had no any reason to go to Taif, only to make another Umrah, this is not liked by the scholars. However, if you want to say, Taif is a very nice city, it is very, you know, it is their uh, summer capital, very nice weather, mashallah. And there is a, something with the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu All these are demolished now, nothing left. Anyway, if you go there and come back outside Miqat, then you are uh, qualified to take again uh, ihram and come to do another umrah. Same thing if somebody gone to Medina first, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, in Mecca first, and then he did his umrah, and then gone to Medina, and he's coming back to Mecca again, he can do another umrah, you know, outside Miqat is considerable. Although for the purpose of the doing umrah, going to Taif, uh, is not that recommended. But worse than this is people go to Masjid Aisha, you know, Masjid Aisha, uh, in Tan'im, uh, three miles away from the Masjid Al Haram, to do frequently Umrah from there is, is not Sunnah. Never ever. Okay? Kaisan, Itabi, Rahmullah said, I don't know. Those people doing frequently Umrah from this Tan'im, are they uh, doing some righteous deeds? Are they committing sin? I'm not sure. And never Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came from Medina to Mecca, only did four Umrah in his life, one Hajj. And he loves more rewardful things. He never did another Umrah from Masjid Aisha Tanaim, never did. Never did. And neither all Sahaba, no Sahaba gone there to make another Umrah. Only Aisha radiallahu anha in Hajj, because she missed, because of her menses, she could not do the first one, she was crying. Uh, no, she did without any tawab gone to straight to, to, to the uh, Arafat. So that's why Rasulullah sallallahu compensated her. If anybody goes to uh, Hajj today and she is like Aisha's case, Aisha Radilan's case, she can do this. But not people of Makkah who are residents, of course, they are allowed to go to do perform Umrah in Tanim, not ourselves. Okay, this is not in our case. Okay? Hayakumullah. Father. Hmm. What I said is not clear. <laughs> no. In one journey, one nusuk, one umrah. One journey, one umrah. This is the sunnah. And you do a lot of dua for your parents. A lot of dua. Uh, okay, for your parents. In tawaf and sa'i, everywhere. In Mecca and Medina, inshallah. Fadal. Okay. If you are finishing 14 days in Mecca, then you become muqim, according to Hanafi fiqh. Okay? But in Mecca, you'll be praying all in jama'ah. There is no uh, qasr. Uh, I mean, you will be uh, following the imam full for raka. But if any sister, any ill person prays at hotel, then this question is relevant, that they can do, of course, 14 days or less, they'll pray two raka. Uh, it's 15 days or more, they pray for Raqqa. Jazakallah. Uh, you know when you leave Makkah to go to hmm. Medina or to the airport, you have to do Bidai or, or, you know. Tawaf al -wada normally is Hajj in Hajj. However, some of the ulama said if you can do, is is good as well. Uh, but nowadays they will not allow you without Ihram. And some people cheat them, and they use ihram cloth to do the tawaf. This is not good. So that's why. Then, since it is not uh, recommended in the sunnah, uh, tawaf wada for umrah only in hajj is recommended. Then, alhamdulillah, come with, without this. If anybody go out from the Muslim, the If you are coming from Medina, 
or gone from Taif and coming back, can you do for the parents? Yes, that's fine. Yes, that should be okay. Inshallah, Fadal. Yes, yes, sir. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes. Cross, crossing in front of the Musalli. Yeah. In, in Mataf area, in Hajar Aswad, it is allowed without Sutra to cross in front of the Musalli. This is very clearly allowed, you know, agreed by the scholars. One thing I missed. You know, when you start Tawaf, your Udu is gone, what do you do? You stop the Tawaf, make Udu, see how many you done? Four, remaining three, now complete the three. Adam taken place. While you are doing Tawaf, stop the Tawaf and pray. And then you, after Salah, complete the rest. Okay? So the broken one, ignore it. I mean, when you go for Udu, after four, you are halfway in half three. Ignore this half, complete the three. If Adam takes place, then sit down and pray. After Salah, from the same place you can start, you can count it. However, if you move a little bit further, then Tawaf is broken. This, this one is broken. But if you can stay on the same dot where you stopped, or a bit back, then this is valid Tawaf. But if you've gone further, somebody pushed you, and you didn't realize you're going further, oh, there is enough empty space over there. I go there. And it is further than you, you thought of, you know, uh, place you stopped, then this one will be broken. You need to ignore this one or come back. Okay? And the rest you can complete. Okay, this is about, uh, yes, that's all. Okay, anything, uh, who raised your hand? Yeah. Ziyara after, uh, you know, graveyard is not, Baki is not allowed for the women, but they can go to the, what call it, uh, Kuba, uh, they can go to the Shuhada Uhud, but they'll be in the same journey from far away, they'll be not going to the closeness of the grave. Because it is written there, the Prophet Wasallam never allowed sister to grave visit. It's written in the Uhud. Okay. So then it's a bit far away. They can see the historical site of the battleground of the Uhud. Okay. Jabal al-Rumah. Where the, you know, uh, archers were allocated. From where the other uh, enemies came. To look into all these, to connect yourself with the Sira, sister, sisters allowed to go. But once come closer to graveyard, they need to be away. Father. Yes. After you done ihram niya, you cannot cut your nail even, fingernail or toy in anything you're not allowed. Okay? Father. Good, good. Uh, yes, that's miscount. I forgot three or four, four or five, I know, I don't know. Then you try to take that less one. Confusion four and five, take it as four. Okay. If you done extra by mistake, no problem. But if you uh, miss one by mistake, it's the problem. That's why count the less one. <laughs> okay. Five. Okay, good question. Can sister take the pills to stop the bleeding, the administration? All in theory, Ulama said allowed, but I am cautious why many sisters taking pill and two days is fine. Third day it started again. They are calling me from Makkah. Allah, not only one call, couple of <laughs> many call I found. This is a, become a confusion now. Okay. Second thing is it has also damaged the sister's regular cycle. It has an, an effect on that. Therefore, I don't recommend that. From 
long time you know, experience of listening to the sisters' cases, this is the conclusion. In theory, some of the scholars said in Kitab, it is allowed. But the reality, they don't know. Reality is too bad. And since there is an easy way out, easy uh, alternative, that Ma Mother Asha's case, that even Hajj, Tawaf, if they are allowed to go to Arafat, so they'll be waiting until they get purification. Now, in theory, if it has a really short time and they will be missing Umrah, all this, they want to take, if they take and if nothing comes out, then I'll say it is allowed. But look at the consequence later on. One is pharmacist here, I don't know how his, his knowledge says that about this, but I have listened to many sisters' experience, you know. <laughs> huh? Risky. Risky. This is risky. This caused damage to their system. And many sisters have already problem in their system. It could further, it caused further distance. You know? Okay, further. Hatim, I didn't cover, yes. Hatim is the open, you know, uh, area of the Kaaba, adjacent to the Kaaba, which is originally part of Kaaba. There is no specific virtue came about the Hatim. That if we pray there, it will be additional reward, nothing came. Praying inside Kaaba, outside Kaaba, same reward. Same reward. However, for the Mataf Tawaf, if you make shortcut, make that is out, then your staff is invalid. But nowadays, I don't think they allow even there are police there. They're not allowed to enter. Yeah, in the gate. Okay. Zakallah khairan. All done. Inshallah. Zakallah khairan. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika. Nashhadu Allah ilaha illa anta nastaqur wa antibu ilayka. Sallallahu ta'ala ala khari khalqi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.